What's up you guys? Welcome back and welcome if you're new. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you guys just exactly how to install a switch panel onto a fifth gen RAV4. It's gonna be a long process, but it's gonna be pretty easy. If you guys do have a Tacoma, I've also done a video on a Tacoma, so check it out. It's gonna be in the description box below. But as far as for today, it's gonna to be for a fifth gen RAV4. It's gonna be awesome because now we could install a bunch of lights on this and just make it bright for those night runs. So let's go ahead and now get into the video and show you guys how it's done. Alright you guys, so as always I'm going to go ahead and show you just kind of what comes inside the box and then we'll go ahead and go with the install of course. So looking right over here inside the box here, uh, it is of course from Oxbeam if you do want to buy it, it's going to be in the description box below. So looking down here, it's going to be of course the switch panel here. So there you go, that's what's going to control all the lights. And then it does come with some stickers to kind of put over them so that way it just kind of identifies as what uh, actual light is connected to it. You're going to get your uh, little fuse box panel right here which all the lights are going to go connected to this. Uh, you're going to get your power and your ground. You're going to get some extra wiring that's going to go from uh, here all the way inside the car to the actual panel. And then you're going to get assortment of stuff. So you're going to get some brackets, zip ties, instruction manual, extra fuses, and some hardware. So for the first step, you're going to want to go ahead and get the uh, fuse box that comes with the aux beam. So grab that. You're going to want to go ahead and get um, the power wire that comes with the aux beam. And you're also going to want to go ahead and get the grounding wire that also comes with it. Uh, so basically what we were doing here is we were just kind of planning as far as we're, we're going to want to mount everything. So this, we're going to mount it here. It does come with screws, so you can kind of screw it down as far for us we're going to be using some strong strong double-sided tape so we can just stick it there instead and then as far as for our power wire we're going to of course connect it directly to the battery there we're going to run the wire kind of underneath here and then as far as uh, this little fuse thing uh, we're going to mount it here same thing we're going to be using uh, double-sided tape although you can use screws if you want to that's up to you and then of course this is going to go connected to the positive as far as for the negative it's going to be ran from here we're going to kind of run it down and connect it as well directly to the negative of the battery all right so of course for our first step since we are going to be double siding uh, taping the box what we're going to be doing is just uh, kind of cleaning off the surface of where we're going to be mounting since it is just double sided tape so once we've done cleaning we're going to go ahead and lay down some of this bad boy tape right here and then get ready for the install all right so now we've applied the double sided tape onto the actual fuse box so all he has to do is of course is just pull off the backings super simple and then we've also applied it to this uh, part as well as you can tell we just need to take off the backing and then we can go ahead and start applying it so like we said we're going to be installing it on top of this fuse box just like that lay it down apply some firm pressure if you're doing it the same way and as you can tell <laughs> it ain't going nowhere and just like that that thing ain't going nowhere so that tape is actually really good it's kind of like using just screws all right you guys so now that we have uh the fuse box from ox beam mounted it's here we have uh the other fuse that's for the power source mounted there as you can tell we don't really have anything connected but to make our life easier up next what we're going to do is open up the fuse box and the reason why is because we're going to be showing you guys where we're going to be adding the add a fuse inside so the added fuse is gonna go right here so let me go ahead and just kind of point you guys where I'm at so here's the headlight looking back over here we're gonna actually be putting the added fuse into this 7.5 luckily for us you guys since we are doing this video for you we've already kind of uh, checked out uh, which one is uh, drawing power so which one we could actually install it to so it's gonna be into this 7.5 back here using our handy dandy tool that this car comes with we're gonna go ahead and take it out Super easy, nothing hard about that. So the next step is, of course, now getting our add a fuse, and then we'll go ahead and start with that process. So of course, right here, looking at the add a fuse, we're gonna put a size five right here at the top, and then that 7.5 that we took off the fuse box, we're gonna be putting it right here at the bottom. Uh, so once we do that, then we can go ahead and finally reinstall it and then start with the wiring process of this whole thing. Now that we have the added fuse back installed right there, uh, you're going to notice um, it's going to catch right here. So we're not going to be able to close the fuse box. But if you guys did watch our uh, last video on the Raptor Light install, we did have to slightly trim here and slightly trim the lid so that way it can close again. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab the Dremel. 
slightly cut a little bit on this side and slightly cut there so that way the fuse box can close once again so now we've uh, chopped it up what we've done here is of course cut it here and then we've cut a little bit down there we cut it little by little just to make sure you know that you don't want to overcut and we're gonna show you guys that it still closes super easy nothing hard about that so there's still full closure. Everything still clips in as intended. So up next, we're gonna now uh, go ahead and get the add a fuse here, and we're gonna be wiring it up to this little box. Uh, red wire should be coming out of it. If I'm not mistaken, this is for the backlight on the actual switch panel. So all you do here is just slide the wire right in, and then you get your crimp tool, crimp it down. Crimp down, just give it a tug, make sure it ain't gonna fall off. So up next here, you can go ahead and just kind of zip tie it away, just so it's not, you know, exposed and hanging everywhere but you guys so now that out of fuse is out of the way we've zip tied it kind of tucked it behind here so it looks nice and clean up next we're going to be working of course with this power wire that was uh, supplied we're going to be connecting it so what you want to do here is you want to go ahead and get the bigger bolts that came in the bag with the washers and of course the nut so we're going to go ahead and install the power side first and just so you guys if you guys can't see it on camera um, in person it has uh, right here embroidered on one side it has a negative sign and on the other side it'll have the positive sign so that way it shows you of course where the uh, wires go of course red goes with positive and black goes with negative if you guys don't know that I probably wouldn't be touching wire especially on a vehicle but that's what we're doing here we've bolted it down it's still kind of loose we're gonna leave it loose for now just in case we need to adjust something and then after we'll go ahead and tighten all that down once we do that, we'll do the same thing, of course, with the black wire that came provided, and we'll be connecting it to the negative side. It's that simple. We know that uh, we're gonna leave that there. Negative's gonna be there. We're gonna go ahead and now tighten these down. Once we do that, then we're gonna move on to this other wire that's here, which uh, this one is gonna be the connection wire that's gonna go from here, of course. It's gonna go inside the cab, and then it's gonna go connect it to the actual panel that's gonna control all the lights. So. Tighten this down and then we'll move on to this. Super easy. At this point here, as you can tell, the door is open. We're gonna go ahead and start working on the inside of the vehicle. The reason why is because like I said, that connection that was in that fuse box, we're gonna be running it right through. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and need to come inside. And we are also gonna wanna go ahead and get a metal clothes hanger like this. We're gonna go ahead and open it up, straight it and out, and then we'll, we'll show you guys what's next. But let's go ahead and start working in here. All right guys, as Jesse mentioned, um, we are working on the inside. A uh, couple things that you're going to need to take off is this trim right here. It comes right out, as you can tell. Pulls right off. We're also going to take this trim. It's a little screw back here, as you can see. This twist comes right out. Pops this off. And then there's three screws that we're going to have to take off. Yeah, so we took that panel off. Now, um, I took one of the screws off to show you guys. There's going to be one here, here, and here that we're gonna be taking off. Let's get that done. Now with those screws off, there's just these little tabs down here. Press those down, and then this comes right off. This, because I don't feel like disconnecting it, I'm just gonna move it out the way. And this is the part where you will need a friend. Um, there is a grommet. <sighs> right up inside of here. Not sure how well you'll be able to see it on camera, probably won't be able to, but um, right by, behind the fuse box that's over here, deep inside there's going to be a grommet and we will be feeding the clothes hanger through there and feeding the wire through um, for the switch panel. Get to it. But for this next step, of course, uh, now we're going to be running the wire, the one that goes connected here, of course, to the inside of the car. Uh, what we've done here is uh, this battery, we actually removed the bracket that was on this side. It's just like a little 12 millimeter bolt that's holding it down just to allow us to bring the battery in. Reason why is because it's going to be hard to see, but right here is the master cylinder and on the side, there's going to be the grommet that we're going to run the wire through. That's uh, kind of where I need to stick my hand in so I can pull it out this way. Um, so that's a move to the side, so we're ready to go there. Uh, now what we're doing here, like I said, you wanted to get your clothes hanger, your metal one, uh, so we could run the wire from the inside out, and now we're just taping it uh, to this uh, connection wire. Uh, 
This wire is the one that came provided that's gonna be connected here to the uh, controller box. You guys, so of course, like Steve was saying, you can't really see uh, where we're running it through. You just have to trust us. There's the grommet up there. So we've ran the wire through. As you can see, the clothes hanger is there. Let me show you guys on the outside so you guys can see how it looks from the engine bay. And then we'll go ahead and keep going from there. So looking right here in the engine bay, like I was saying, that's the master cylinder there. And here is the clothes hanger coming out. Um, if you guys do have two people, it hops out. Like we were saying, one person here pulling it out one person from the inside pulling it in. Um, so up next, we're gonna go ahead and of course remove this tape and then go ahead and run the wire up right here and connect it here and then we'll keep going. Okay guys, so now I kind of pulled the wire in a little bit. I have it ran underneath all these wires here and as you can tell, it's right here coming up. So now what we need to do here is just connect it. The cool thing about this aux beam one is it has connections and it only goes in one way. Um, you'll see it in person, but there's like a little notch there and it's gonna have the notch also on this side. So it'll only connect one way and then after that, you can go ahead and tie this thing down. To show you guys, so you clip it in tie it down all right you guys so now that it's done of course now you can go ahead and just kind of tuck it out of the way just like that if you need to zip tie it you can zip tie it but let's go ahead and move inside all right you guys so now of course we're going to be working with the controller so basically we're going to be installing the bracket to the back of it uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, grab the bag that has all the little hardware inside um, you're not going to need to use all of it um, because it does come with different mounting points so like that bracket we're not going to use we're going to be using this bracket that's here that has these two attachments just like that we're going to grab the allen key that comes with it and then inside you see these screws we're going to be grabbing the ones that are a little bit smaller with the rounded top i know you're not going to be able to see it on camera because i don't think it's going to focus um, but it's going to have a rounded top you have some other small screws that have a flat top we're going to be using the ones with the rounded top that are smaller um, so basically what we're going to be doing here we're going to be mounting the bracket on and then as far as for steve uh we'll show you guys when we go inside the car but he's going to be using double-sided tape on this to go ahead and mount it onto the car he's not going to be using the provided screws because he doesn't want to screw it in you guys will see what i'm talking about when we get to that step let's put this on this part here is super easy uh, you just kind of uh, figure it out it's easy you put the bracket on it should have four mounting points uh, once you find the four holes then you grab those screws that i told you that come provided you screw down the bracket and then you flip this side, put the other two screws, and then we'll go inside and start mounting this bad boy. All right, and once you've securely mounted it, uh, you still wanna have this kind of loose. Grab it and grab your Allen key, and we'll move to the car to kind of see where we're gonna be uh, mounting this. Now coming inside the vehicle, uh, we're gonna just kind of find a spot as far as where to mount this thing. So uh, we're thinking up here kind of similar where I have uh, mine on my Tacoma. So it's basically gonna sit there. It's gonna look nice and clean, pretty much flush. So there it is. Like I said, we're gonna be using double-sided tape. Steve doesn't wanna screw it in. So double-sided tape would probably be a lot better, especially because it's on this. So that's what we'll do now. So same thing as we did in the engine bay, clean off the surface. And then we're gonna be using that same double-sided tape that's really, really crazy strong. All right, so of course with this type of double-sided tape, you wanna just sit it once because after that, it ain't going nowhere. So that's pretty much where he wants it. It's gonna look good there. It's gonna look nice and clean. Damn. So of course, as you can tell, it's still a little loose right now. Um, once we're done, kind of, we'll go ahead and tighten it down. That's what this Allen key that was provided is for. We'll tighten those bad boys down and then we'll run the wire. So next step is going to be connecting this. Uh, it's going to be the same as the inside in the engine bay. It only goes in one way and then you go ahead and twist that thing on. Uh, the reason we're doing this first before we actually tuck it is so that way we know the length on where uh, we're going to place it. So once we find that out, now we can just kind of adjust it, see what we're working with. You could pull this weather seal back to kind of help you guide it. And once you peel the weather seal, you could just go ahead and run the wiring through just like that. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see it in person when you're doing it yourself. So just put it all the way down. Now it's nice and clean. So as you can tell from here, 
It looks like we didn't really mess with anything. It, it actually looks like it's going inside the engine bay from there. Even though it's not, it's just tucked nicely underneath. Up next, we'll go ahead and zip tie this over here. And then we'll put all the panels back together. And then we'll move back to the engine bay so we can finally connect the positive and the negative. Now that we have it all installed, we've put everything back in the inside all together. So looking back over here, all we have left is going to be the positive and the negative that connects to the actual battery. It's going to be super simple and we're done with the install. Once you're done with that, make sure to stay tuned to our fall following videos where we install the actual uh, pods and everything to light this thing up. Heck yeah, but super simple. Just in case you guys are curious though, um, pulling these things up, let me go ahead and put them down just to show you guys. But all along the way, uh, you're gonna notice there's plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus. The reason for that on both sides, um, when you're connecting your actual pods, on the pods, you don't need the relay harness or anything like that anymore. You literally connect the pod directly into the positive and negative, and this acts as your relay and your switch and all that. So that's the cool thing about having something like this, a switch panel. And then only other thing you need to take note on is on what fuse you're connecting to it, so that way you don't blow anything but it's that simple like i said uh stay tuned to our upcoming videos when we light up the when we install the actual pods as far as ditch lights light bars and all that so the last step on this of course is going to be uh positive and negative like i said just go ahead and grab your 12 millimeter socket and connect these bad boys so we're going to go ahead and just start off with the positive which is going to be the red wire just like that slide it right over and then you put the bolt back in tighten it and then we'll move on to the ground heck yeah just like that and then we'll go ahead and get our black one connect it there and then we'll go inside and test it out of course all right you guys so now that we're all done as you can tell some of the wire is still exposed right here but what we have is we have some wire loom that'll go over this so it'll look a little bit cleaner and nice and factory let's go inside and see if it actually works so right now it should be off when we turn the vehicle on the lights should light up so as you can tell it actually worked so up next like i said make sure to stay tuned to our videos where we install the ditch lights light bars and a couple other little things that are coming to this bad boy heck yeah all right guys what's up so as you guys just saw we did the install on the switch panel on my rav4 now i'm able to put up a bunch of lights as you can see we already have one on here so stay tuned for a future video on that one and I can't wait to start adding more lights to this for those night runs. Yeah, oh yeah, if you guys liked today's video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.